Come jolly lads, both old and young, come all ye hearts of gold. I'll tell you of old Ironsides and of her captain bold, my lads, and of her captain bold. More than 150 years ago, when our country was young, we had no navy. When United States trading ships went to sea, pirates captured them. So President George Washington ordered the building of six big warships, and the first one was named the Constitution. What kind of a boat was it? Oh, she was not a boat. She was a ship, and a ship is she, not it. A full rigged ship, so lovely sight, her sails all white and shiny. She cuts the wave so free and bright like a bird above a briny. And when you see her catch the breeze, you'll say, aye, aye, sir, matey. A little boat can be anything you please, but a full rigged ship's a lady. Shipbuilder Joshua Humphreys of Philadelphia planned and built the Constitution, and he decided to make her a frigate, which was a very fast ship with three masts and 44 guns. He built her of red cedar wood and hard pine and live oak. He made her so heavy and strong that other shipbuilders laughed at him. <laughs> <laughs> Too much sail. <laughs> Clumsy as an ox. She'll never float. <laughs> ha, 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 she'll never float. She's not a ship, not even a boat. Just as clumsy as an ox. Nothing but a big pine box. Too many guns and too much sail. Fat and bulky like a whale. Ought to put him in the stocks for building such a big pine box. Other countries laughed too, and England, thinking America had no navy, began taking our sailors off our trading ships and making them work on English vessels. Have you heard? The British have stopped another one of our ships and impressed our American seamen. Yes. You know Silas, my cousin. He was on that ship. Men, this country must act. You're right. The British must be stopped. I agree with you. So, in 1812, there was war. The Constitution sailed out under the command of Captain Isaac Hull, off the coast, she sighted five enemy ships, too many to fight, so Captain Hull put about. But it was too late. The British had already sighted the Constitution. That clumsy pine box will never outsail five English ships. Yeah, look, she's drawing away. She's showing us her heels. Soon, in every tavern, Americans were singing an old song with new words about the Constitution. Not long ago, five British ships on tour gave a chase, sir. But spite of all their cranks and quips, she beat them in the race, sir. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, dandy. Though five to one, the Yankee boys at sailing are quite handy. Our officers were gallant, and our sailors were very brave. But the United States was still a young nation, and the war was going against us. And then one day, while the Constitution, with Captain Hull in command, was sailing off the northern coast, an enemy ship was sighted. Sail ho! Sail ho, Captain Hull. Where away, Mr. Adams? Where away? Two points off the larboard bow, sir. She's a great vessel, sir. Tremendous sails. Mr. Adams, call all hands. Place the stars and stripes to the peak and beat to quarters. The enemy ship was the Guerriere, a big English man-of-war. The Guerriere, a frigate bold on the foamy ocean rolled, commanded by proud Dacres, a grandio, with as choice a British crew as a rammer ever drew. They could flog the Frenchman too, to once a handy o the Constitution hove in view, says Proud Dacres to his crew. Come clear the ship for action and be handy, oh. To the cannon boys now set her, and to make our men fight better. Mix gunpowder with their brandy, oh. The Guerriere fired first. The two ships drew closer. 
Guerrier kept firing, but the Constitution didn't fire a shot. Why don't you fire, sir? Mr. Adams, I'll tell you when to fire. Closer and closer together they sailed, and still not a cannon sounded from the Constitution. All right, Mr. Adams, stand ready. But see that not a shot is wasted when I give the word. The ships were now only 25 yards apart. Helmsman, what about? Men, do your duty. If they sink us, we'll go down like men. And now they were almost touching. Mr. Adams, pour in the whole broadside. By heaven, we've won. The British ship is ours. Now the British shot flew hard, which the Yankee answered not, till they got within the distance they called handy oh. Then the broadside we poured, carried their mainmast by the board, which made their lofty frigate look abandoned oh. Our clumsy pine box had outsailed and outfought the enemy. That victory was the turning point of the war. And then those who had laughed at the old pine box were now saying... <laughs> yes, sir. They say the British cannonballs bounce right off the heavy oak sides of the Constitution, as if they were made of iron. Sure, don't you know what they're calling her? What? Old Ironsides. Yes, from the time of its victory over the Guerriere, the Constitution was called Old Ironsides. Many years later, when she was no longer fit for sea, she was put in dry dock in Boston the port from which she had sailed so long ago. And all the school children of our country chipped in their pennies to preserve the grand old ship. So if you go to Boston, you may see her there to this very day with the stars and stripes still flying from her proud peak. Let's sing about old iron sides where good ships catch the breeze. Of how she fought and won for us The freedom of the seas, my lads The freedom of the seas